Okay, in this problem, we've got to prove that uh, a sum of 1 on k between where we go from 1 to n. So we're looking at uh, 1 on 1 plus 1 on 2 plus 1 on 3 and so on through to 1 on k. It's going to be less than or equal to, uh, well, I'm sorry, 1 to n, be n plus 2 over 2. So we have that situation. So it's basically the sum of integers, a sum of uh, fractions where the denominator is just increasing through to n. So equal to n plus 2 over 2. So we start with n is equal to 1. Uh, so 1 over 1 is less than or equal to 1 plus 2 over 2, which is 3 over 2. So therefore it's true. Yep. 1 is less than 1 and a half. Not a problem. So we assume it's true for n is equal to k. So we get the statement 1 plus a half third through to 1 on k less than or equal to k plus 2 over 2. So that's all good. So what we want to do is prove that this statement, 1 plus a half plus a third through to 1 on k, is l plus the 1 on k plus 1, because it's the sum of the first k plus 1 terms. Obviously that would be less than or equal to k plus 1 plus 2 over 2, or which is the same as k plus 3 over 2. So if we can get it less than that, we're in business. We have proved it. So we start. We know that statement there. Because that amount was less than k plus 2 over 2, then that whole statement plus 1 on k plus 1 must be less than k plus 2 over 2 plus 1 on k plus 1. Now remember what we're trying to aim for, so let's get a common denominator. So we multiply the top, the, the numerator denominator here by k plus 1 and the new random denominator here by 2. So that's where we get that statement. Can't do much else here. We want to get the k plus 3, but that's going to give us k squared up there. So let's get a common, let's uh, f expand it out and collect terms. Now, the whole idea is that, can I get a situation where I'm going to be able to subtract, I uh, get some factorize and get rid of k plus 1. So this is where we're doing a, a real lot of um, manipulation here to uh, decompose this one. So have a look at the decomposition. k squared stayed the same. We've got a 3k which now becomes 4k minus k. 4 becomes 3 plus 1. So we've done a bit of work there. So you've got to take a real lot of care there. And why did I get k squared plus 4k plus 3? Well basically because I want to split it up be able to get rid of firstly the k plus 1 on top and bottom but also have a k plus 3 so that's why that manipulation occurred so I would get that particular quadratic so I can do some cancelling out because once I get there k plus 1 cancels give me k plus 3 and 2 which is what I want what I'm left with though is minus k plus 1 all over this part so when I put that as a separate fraction because I want to get that by itself and get a separate fraction I get the k plus 1 over 2, lots of k plus 1. Now, when we look at that, that will be a whole number. Oh, look, that won't be a whole number. Sorry, it'll be a positive number. So the only time it won't be a positive number if k is equal to 1, and that will give it 0, which is still going to make that minus 0 less than, oh, sorry, equal to k plus 3 on 2. So if you, k is equal to 1, it's going to be equal to whatever that is. But if it's k is any other positive number that's going to be getting subtracted from that fraction there which means that what we've got here must be smaller than k plus 3 on 2 by itself because that's going to be subtracted you take a number away from something your answer becomes smaller so you can see that's why this statement is less than that, that, that statement is less than this one because that must be smaller than that one by itself. And thus it's proved because we want, we want, we want to start with that one and prove that it was less than or equal to k plus 3 over 2. Really have a look at the decomposition that went on there. It's not an easy one, but again, it was done with what we had in mind, what we wanted to prove at the end. So look at the next one to the power of n greater than n squared for n is equal greater than 4. So this is not the saying it's not going to work for 1, 2 or 3. Um, and actually, it should be n is greater than 5. 
I'm greater than four, sorry. No, that's right. It's, I've got myself confused a little bit there. Greater than four, that's okay. It doesn't work if it's equal to four. But we need a, if, it's, if it is four, we need an equal sign there. So we can't have it equal to four either. So we start with n is equal to five. Two to the power of five is 32. Five squared is 25. Bingo, it, it's true. Assume it's true for n is equal to k. So two to the power of k is greater than k squared. So again, we want to prove in uh, for n is equal to k plus 1. We start with 2 to the power of k plus 1. And what we want is that 2 to the power of k plus 1 would be greater than k plus 1 all squared. Can we get there? So again, we decompose it. 2 to the power of k plus 1 is 2 lots of 2 to the power of k. And 2 to the power of k is greater than k squared. So we're able to do that. Now we've got 2k squared. So what I'm going to do, I want k plus 1 all squared. Well, here's our manipulation. Let's break it up to a k squared plus k squared. That's what I had. But now I want a k plus 1 all squared. So how do I get that? Well, I need a 2k there. So I need to subtract 2k. And I need a plus 1 to get it a perfect square. And I need to subtract 1 because I had plus uh, 1, subtract 1. All that, if you clean that up, you get back to 2k squared. So I haven't changed the value. I'm not allowed to change the value. So I've got to decompose it and bring in these terms by making sure that 2k minus 2k would be 0, 1 minus 1 would be 0. So now I can factorize this part to give me k plus 1 all squared, which is what I want. And then I've got the leftovers, k squared minus 2k plus 1. Now, even though I've got negative terms here, what I've got to consider is that when k is greater than or equal to 5, then k squared minus 2k minus 1 is, equal to, is greater than 0. So you're going to have a look at that and you could see that, well, that, that would be the case. You can get a, you can do a graph or whatever you'd like there. But when k is equal to 5, it's greater than 0. And any other value greater than uh, 5 is, is greater than it's greater than 0. So again, that amount plus that amount must be greater than k plus 1 all squared by itself. So that's a little bit trickier. And it's a little bit tricky because it's not a positive value. So it's not automatically going to be greater than. But... It is when we consider that k has got to be greater than or equal to 5. In the last one here, we've got 12 to the power of n, greater than 7 to the power of n plus 5 to the power of n. And now it's for greater than or equal to 2. So we substitute 2 in, 12 power of 2, greater than 7 squared plus 5 squared, 144 is greater than 74. Not a problem. Assume it's true for n is equal to k, 12 to the power of k, greater than 7 to the power of k, plus 5 to the power of k. That's all okay. We're going to get that into our step 3. And, and what we want to prove is 12 to the power of k plus 1, greater than 7 to the power of k plus 1, plus 5 to the power of k plus 1. So let's manipulate it. 12 to the power of k plus 1 is 12 lots of 12 to the power of k. Now we want to get step 2 in, so 12 to the power of k is greater than 12 lots of, 12, 7 to the power of k plus 5 to the power of k. That was greater than that, so 12 lots of it is, great, of, is greater than each of them. So, expand it out. We get 12 times 7 to the power of k, 12 times 5 to the power of k. Now again, here goes the decomposition, because I know I want to get 7 to the power of k plus 1, 5 to the power of k plus 1, which means if I can get this statement, I can get down to 7 to the power of k plus 1. Now I've got 7 times 7 to the power of k, which leaves me 5 lots of 7 to the power of k left over. 5 lots of 5 to the power of k brings me down to 5 lots of k to the plus 1 when I play around with my indices. And that leaves me 7 lots of 5 to the power of k. Now again, what I want to prove is that this whole amount is just greater than a 7 power of k plus 1 plus 5 to the power of k plus 1 alone. Well, obviously it is because all 7 to the power of a positive whole number. 5 to the power of a positive whole number when multiplying, that's going to be well and truly larger than that amount by itself. So thus, 12 to the power of k plus 1 must be greater than 7 to the power of k plus 1 plus 5 to the power of k plus 1. Just remember, it doesn't matter if what we've got there, as long as that's positive, all this amount's going to be greater than all that amount. And, and that's what we want to prove.